All right, good morning, Grace Baptist Church, Brother Chris Hannon, Bloomingdale, Georgia. Fresh off uh, last night's uh, men's meeting. Men's night out. We had a men's night out. There was no women, no women allowed. Somebody even asked me, called me up on the phone and said, so no, I came back and said, no, no women, none, zero. Amen. No, I said, all uh, biological. <laughs> well, I said, we'll be checking birth certificates at the door. Amen. I said, biological men. I said, men with mustaches. Make sure they got some facial hair. You know what I mean? So I said, are your sons, you draw some, your sons come in and real small, put some, uh, put a, take them to the barber and get some of that stuff they put on that shoe polish. You don't have a mustache? Oh, get out, get out. <laughs> get out. It's natural to have a mustache. That's right. You got to shave it. Did you shave? I do shave. Okay, that's why you don't have a mustache. I know you figured that out, but I, we just solved that mystery. <laughs> Well, Luke chapter 19, that's where we're going to be at this morning. I realized something, Luke chapter 19, every time I read this, this narrative of this story, I realized something as I was looking at it. I was like, you know what? I said, this is a different thing going on here. Luke chapter 19, uh, but Luke chapter 19, verse 1, it says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now, Jericho has a storied history uh, in your Bible. Hold your hand there. Well, let me read on down through here, and then we'll get to that. He says, And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was. And so now he heard about him, but he wanted to see him for himself. He says, and could not for the press. And he's talking about the, he's not talking about CNN, ABC, and all those places. He's talking about uh, the press of people, a mass of people. He says, because he was little of stature, all right? So he's like Mike Watson. Um, and he ran, and he ran before, Mike Watson, by the way, for y'all don't know, Mike Watson is six, I always think he's six nine. He says he's six seven, but I think he's actually six nine. Um, uh, so just imagine Zacchaeus is 6'9", trying to climb up a tree. <laughs> uh, he was more probably like, I don't know, um, uh, Stephen back there. Uh, and he ran before, uh, uh, before at verse 4, and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass uh, that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for uh, today I must abide in thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, he's talking about, now these are the Pharisees. This is a religious crowd. They're always on the prowl. Always looking to see what's going on. We know you're not the son of God. We know you're fake and everything else. But why y'all watching him all the time? Yeah. Why can't a man go and have a, you know, a little lunch with somebody? I mean, if he ain't, if he's, if he ain't real, why y'all why spending so much time and effort? I always wonder why the world puts so much time and effort in denying God who they say ain't real. Let us have our little flags and crosses and do our little God. I mean, if he ain't real, you know, we, y'all ain't got to worry about it. Unless he's real. Because if he's real and the word of God's real, then y'all are in real trouble. Amen. Amen. So he says, he says uh, and he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they, they saw it, here's the, dis the distractors, they all murmured, saying that, he gone to be guest with a sinner. So what? Well, y'all see how this? See, see how spiritual hypocrisy? How bad it is? So what? If he ain't who you say it is, and Zacchaeus stood and said, "Lord, behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold." Where did he get that from? He got that from the law. The law says if, if a man takes something that he, from a person uh, wrongfully, he got to restore it fourfold. Got to realize that. Now watch what Jesus said. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is a what? Son of Abraham. You see, and the reason why he says that is because those Pharisees, they would deny that you are a real Jew because you're not going along with what they're saying because you are a publican, and a publican, what did he do? What was his vocation? He, his, he collected taxes on behalf of the Roman government, and to them, that's a total betrayal. No, I don't like tax people, so no. <laughs> that's not a total betrayal, though. Well, watch this. Uh, look at this. He's for the, uh, he says, uh, and here, here is verse 10. Now, verse 10, it, it sums up the whole, this whole thing. Look at verse 10 says, uh, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Do you see that? Now, I have a spe uh, Luke 19, 10 has a special significance to me because my son is Luke. He was nine years, 19 years old. 
And he always wore the number 10. He wore the number 10 in basketball, number one, number 10 in baseball, I mean in football. Number 10, we have a jersey. And my grandkids wear number 10. And so Luke, when he turns 19, Luke that was here last night, he'll be Luke 19.10. So I always know what Luke 19.10 says. There's a son of man to come and seek and save that which is lost. Amen. Amen. I never forget when that happened in our life that the Lord said, look at Luke 19.10. And I looked at Luke 19.10. But um, Jericho was a famous, uh, famed city. And what I, I found about this story, when I got to verse 10, it reminded me that, and here's the thing. You know, it looks like in the narrative when it starts out that Zacchaeus is looking for Jesus. But Jesus was always looking for Zacchaeus. Amen. Before Zacchaeus ever climbed that tree, Jesus was looking for him. Amen. Amen. Well, let me give you this about Jericho. Go if you real quick, real quick to Joshua. Jericho's famed uh, uh, in that y'all know the uh, they wrote songs about Jericho and different things. But one of the most famous things, go back to Joshua chapter six, that had ever happened in Jericho was uh, uh, when they attacked uh, Jericho. And they went across Joshua, but, and you find in Joshua chapter 6, it gives a narrative there. And y'all know, they, they, they crossed right, and, and people don't realize, but when they crossed the Jordan River, it crossed it right next to Jericho, so they could see the river dried up. They I mean, they literally saw the river dried up, and they literally saw them walking dry shod across uh, the Jericho. Amen. Now, um, imagine how frightening that would be to fight that army that you just watched go across there. And you've seen God miraculously stop. And you've heard about it 40 years earlier. You heard about this same group came out of Egypt and how God, the, uh, uh, the River Jordan, uh, made it, uh, the Red Sea, I think it's the Red Sea, yeah, and uh, dried it up and they walked across. Now they're, now, that was 40 years ago, way far away now, it's right next door. And y'all watching, you don't think the people watch that? Yes, they did. Right next to him, he says, now Jericho was straight and shut up because of the, and so now they're on, the, on your side. Because of the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. And the, and the Lord said unto Joshua, see, I have given uh, un, into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. He said, and you shall, come, uh, you shall come past the city, uh, all, uh, 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 all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Uh, th thus shalt thou do six days. And the seventh priests shall bear, uh, the seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns, and seven days shall ye come past the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets, and it shall come to pass that when you make a long uh, uh, blast, the, the ram's horn, with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight, for, uh, straight before him. What, what, a, what a war strategy. All right, this is how we're going to do this. We're going to walk around every day, once a day. Okay. For seven days. For seven days we're walking around, once a day. Yes. What do we say while we walk? We shout, we're going to get y'all. We're going to, no, no, we don't say nothing. We don't say nothing? No, we don't say nothing. We don't do do we lift up? Do we, do we make bad motions? No, we don't do nothing. Just walk around seven days. And then the seventh day, we walk around and then we, we shout. It, okay, and, and that's when we, we go and get them. No, the wall's going to fall down. The wall's, <laughs> yeah, and then, then, you take, then you go straight in. That's, how, that's, that's the war strategy. Now, you can say what you want to, you know what? You got to have some men of faith to follow you. Amen and amen. Because I ain't never heard no war strategy like that. Amen. But with God, all things are possible. Amen. And so y'all know, and I'll never forget, I heard about a history lesson one time, and they said they were studying archaeological, and they found out, they said, the walls of Jericho did not fall in. Because people said, well, because people said, well, okay, well, maybe the Lord knew, and you know, try, people try to help people out and try to explain. He said, well, the octave, there's certain octaves you can hit, and it'll hit a certain. So, you know, y'all ever see people hit up these these tuning forks and break a glass? 
They said that maybe that was it was these being in unison and the Lord knew that the echo chamber would hit the walls a certain way and they would crumble and everything else. No. Archaeology, archaeologists found out the walls didn't fall in, they fell out. So all God was looking for was them to be obedient to what he said. Amen. And then you know what? He would do the rest. Amen. Remember Brother Morris was talking about Gideon and you know the lamps and the pictures and everything. And you know what I found out in my life? If I would just be obedient to what God said, he would do the rest. Amen. It's when I, you know, it's when I take control. Amen. It's when I got it figured out. Oh, this is how Lord. Oh, I got it from here. <laughs> No, it don't work that way. But so that was, you say what you want to, you know what? All through history and everything else, that was the most famed thing that ever happened to Jericho. And they made some, y'all heard, walls of Jericho. I mean, Josh won the battle with Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Josh won the battle with Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. Well, you talk about Moses, and you talk about Elijah. And y'all ever heard that song? Yeah, yeah famous song, right? But, brethren, you know what happened? You know, it was a greater event that took place in Jericho is when Jesus passed by that day. Amen. You know the greatest event in our Christian lives before our Christian lives started is the day Jesus passed by our way. Amen. Amen. That's the day when Jesus passed by our way. And so this is a great day in Jericho. Amen. Because at this point now Jericho is a, it's not the city that it was and everything else. Y'all remember, remember uh, 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 I preached on a ritual, a ritual a religion, and a, 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 a ritual religion, and a, what's the last one? Ritual religion and reconciliation, right? Y'all remember? Y'all know where that man was walking? Y'all know, know where he went? He was in Jericho. Jericho not the place you want to be after dark. <laughs> Said he fell among thieves. That was Jericho. They left him wounded and dead. That's the hood here in the bad part. That's where Jericho is a different place now. Amen. But when Jesus passed by, amen, you know, Jericho experienced a revival. Amen. Look at this. So, and so it says uh, in our lives, you know, there's a lot of thieves in this world. Amen. Taking our time, still in our soul. Thank God that Jesus passed by. You know what? And you know what he did? Guess what? Uh, he changed all. He changed not this life, but he changed the eternity. Amen. So the most, most, uh, most important event is happening. Now, let's go back and look at this man real quick, our, our, our friend here, Zacchaeus. Now, Zacchaeus, uh, if you look, verse 2, first of all, uh, what I want to say about Zacchaeus is that he is a successful uh, man. Notice what he says, verse 2. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was chief among the publicans. All right? So he's a successful man. He's, he's crawled up the ladder and everything else. Uh, I want you to know, and there's a, you know what? Uh, guess what? I'm not against people, uh, and no way should be anybody be against anybody that climbs up any la ladder or, or, or vocation in life uh, legally. Amen? Those people need to be applauded, and those people need to be not idolized, but they need to be the mentors on how you're supposed to do it legally. But now the people that do it illegally, you know what? I'm not applauding that. Amen? Yes, sir. So he's a successful man. Now, in that, he's a secure man. Look at verse 2 again. He says, And below there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was what? Rich. There is some security in having enough, and having some means. Amen. Amen. Yes, it is. I'm not, not, you know, the Bible doesn't say, hate the rich. It doesn't say that. I always tell people, you know, people talk about, man, those people flying corporate jets. I'm glad people fly corporate jets. Yeah. I'm very glad. I wish more. I wish, I wish more would. I wish more could afford to fly corporate jets. Right? Why? Because that affords us a comfortable living. Yeah. Amen. It's, we're only making crumbs. Eh? What well, is good, good size crumbs then? You ever, you ever notice you get, you get, you get, uh, I like to eat, uh, what is the, uh, the uh, what's the thing called to put on the salad of the bread? Uh, croutons, I like croutons, I like garlic and cheese croutons, man, God, Petridge Farms garlic and cheese croutons, man, I just eat my, sometimes I just come home from work, you know what I do, I just get the bag, my wife always gets several bags, because I would just get that bag and I would eat it before dinner. But then, you know what happens, there's big crumbs in there, there's some little crumbs in there, amen, and I'm getting some big crumbs, amen. Because I told when somebody said something about them, I said, you ain't buy, I said, if a person was poor, they wouldn't be buying no jets. I said, where are the jobs that the poor people are creating? Amen. Where are they? Amen. So 
it's not hate the re rich, but the warning is they that will be rich will fall, right? It's a willful, that's your total desire without a recognition of God. Amen. You don't get it twisted. We're going to hate people because they're rich, but while they provide you a, you know, a house, a car, and all this other stuff because you can work for them. You going to work for poor people? See, that's a great ideology. Sounds all good, but that's not what's going on practically. But he was secure. He had riches. And y'all don't tell me this right here. You don't feel secure when you got, you feel secure when you ain't got no money and, and the bills are due? You just, why don't you just say, Jesus, I'm going to, let's work, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to relax and go to sleep while you work this out. No, I get the phone call. Pray for me. The bills is due. <laughs> <laughs> So he's a secure man, right? But no, and he's a resourceful man. Look at verse 3. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and he could not for, uh, for the press because he was little of stature. And he ran before it and climbed into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass by the soul. This man climbed the tree, amen? He really wanted to see him, amen? Now, I know y'all heard in the Bible that this is, and it says he was a man short of stature, but we all know who the shortest man in the Bible is. You know who the shortest man in the Bible is? Do you, you Stephen? It's found in Job chapter 2, verse 11. No, don't look it up. Just tell me who you... It's one of Job's... I'm going to give you here. It's one of Job's friends. He had three friends that came and visited him. Seven days they stood there and said nothing. They all know. <laughs> his name is... The shortest man about it is Bill Dad the Shoe Height. <laughs> Shoe height. Your dad the shoe height. It's in the Bible. <laughs> I finally get him to open his Bible and look. <laughs> Your dad's shoe. Now, I said all that, I said this right here, but you know what? It's amazing. You know why? Because we're going on through this, right? He's a cheap, so a successful man, he's a rich man, he's a resourceful man, but you know what? Something's missing. Y'all know it's a lot of people like this. Y'all realize there's a lot of people like this. They're successful. They're secure, right? They're resourceful people. And they'll tell you, you know, I didn't get this by handouts. I didn't, you know what? And guess what? That, that's wonderful. But you know what? Something's missing. Why is he climbing a tree to see Jesus? If you got it all, why didn't he just saying, hey, Jesus is coming to child, man. Okay. No, something's missing. And I don't care how successful you are. I don't care how well you do. You know what? Something about this life and the things that fall, we know is something's missing. And that which was missing, uh, you know what? Only can be fulfilled by Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. But again, it looks like when you start running down through it, it looks like Zacchaeus looking for Jesus. He climbed a tree. But in reality, Jesus was looking for him all along. And I told y'all that because Luke 19.10 sums it up. He said, for the Son of Man is coming to, he's come to seek and to save that which is lost. Amen. Yeah. He was always looking for it. And the reason you know that is the way the, it, it made it, 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 uh, the narrative is. And I want you to notice Christ, you don't think so? Watch this. Here it is. Christ had to pass by that way, right? Christ uh, is the one who goes to his house. Right? Christ is the one that spoke to him first. Amen? Right? He did all, he did, he, Christ initiated all this. Just like he did with the woman at the well. Amen? Just like he did in the Just like the Lord is doing in your life if you're lost. He's initiating it. Amen? People often, you know, y'all ever hear people talking about that, you know, uh, that, you know, people going on these spiritual journeys looking for God? And the reality is this right here. God's right there. He's waiting for you to turn around. He's waiting for you to get finished with all with the rocks and with the, with the, the statues and with the good works and with the baptism. And he's like, and when you finally turn around and say, he said, he go, about time. Been right here calling you. That's what I found. Out. Didn't you find that out when you got saved? Amen. He was looking for you. And that's what's taking place. And I know that. You know why? Because the Bible said, For God so loved the world that he gave. Amen. See, that's who initiated it. Hearing his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us what? First. First. And 
He sent his son to be a propitiation for our sin. Amen. Long before we uh, went to church or got tired of us, long before that, he initiated it. He is, that's why he's looking for people not interested in him. Amen. He is. And the narrative shows you. Look at the first thing I want you to notice is look at verse 5. When Jesus came to the place, watch this, and when Jesus, uh, uh, when Jesus came to the place, watch this, he did what? He looked up. He looked up. So first thing, he saw him. Let me tell you, you know what the Lord, you know what the Lord is doing? He sees every sinner and where they're at and what they're doing. People don't think he sees them, but he sees. And this is the thing about, that's why people, so many people got this thing wrong. They're like, preacher, before I come to church, and I want to do what y'all keep saying, be, be a saving everything, but I got to get myself together. Let me tell you something. The Lord sees all the good and the bad. Amen. Everything. Everything. Your Lord, he sees every, somebody said something about it, and he said, here's the great thing about salvation. God knew he who he was saving, uh, how he needed to be saved. Amen and amen. And then, you know, he knew what I would be after my salvation, and he saved me anyway. Amen. amen. That shows you God. God sees it all. Amen. And we got some kind of crazy idea that we got to get ready. We got to get. We got to get dressed up. And you know I me. Mean? And and they jumped up. That preacher, y'all got strong walls and all this kind of bunch of crazy stuff. God, He come to seek in the same sinner. Amen. Amen. He saw him. The Lord looked up. He saw him. He saw him way before. He saw Zacchaeus way before Zacchaeus saw him. Amen. Look at this. Watch this. Go if you will to Jeremiah chapter 1. I wish people would get this, uh, this understanding. Let me tell you something. The Lord ain't coming to throw you in. He's not, uh, he's not coming to throw you in hell because he, he already had the opportunity to do that. He already seen what you've been doing. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 1. Look at verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 1. People, we, I got, you know, we, I got, we, we're hiding stuff. You're not hiding anything. Jeremiah chapter 1. You ain't hiding anything. Let me tell you, here's the real, the real deal. It's right here. We, whether we understand it or not, the mercy of God is, is what's keeping us around. Amen and amen. amen. Jeremiah chapter 1, look at verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Amen. Here's the argument. Oh, oh so you mean, you mean uh, uh, life begins before they say, before all these detractors amen. say it begins? Amen. amen. Here's God. God said, I knew you. He said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and uh, 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 ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, O Lord God, behold, how can I speak for I'm a child? But God, God said, he, and, uh, said he knew him, amen. That shows you, you know, when life begins in conception, amen. And I told y'all before, we y'all know what we do. They got on the moon, they got to Mars, and these rascals, y'all know what they said? They said, we found a one cell life form in Mars. We find life on Mars. Well, if there's life on Mars with a one cell, uh, one, uh, one cell thing on Mars, then it's life in a woman's womb. Amen. But Lord, when he said he know you, he said, before I formed you, I knew you. Amen. See, the Lord, he saw him. And again, you know what the Lord knows. Watch this. Look at this detailed description of the Lord knowing us. Go to Psalm 139. Don't tell me, Psalm 139. Tell me the Lord don't know us. Psalm 139. He said he, he saw him. And I'm going to tell you something. You know what? The Lord sees you. Amen. He sees you in all your, he sees you on the good days, the bad days, the indifferent days, you know. He still sees you. Psalm 139, look what it says here in Psalm 139 verse 1. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down city, my, my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and uh, my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, uh, o God, Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thy hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. <clears throat> it is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whither shall I go from my spirit? spirit? Now, this is what people try to do. They think they're escaping God. But let me tell you something. The God that sent his son to die on the cross for your sins shows you, you know what? He has an unquenchable love for you. You, don't, you may not love him, but he definitely loves you. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? <clears throat> Excuse me. Or whither shall I see, uh, 
flee from thy presence. If I ascend up to heaven, thou art with me. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the other more parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall uphold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light unto me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light, a light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was uh, made in secret and curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Thine eyes deceived my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book uh, all my members were written, which are continuous, were fashioned. When, as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. Don't tell me God don't know his creation. Amen. He knows every last sinner. He knows every last saint. Amen. He knows those that are saved. And he knows those that are not saved. Amen. He lets his sun shine on the just and the unjust. Amen. Amen. He knows. He knows. See, he is looking for people not looking for him. Amen. He come to seek and to save that which is lost. Amen. Said he saw him. There was no sense of Zacchaeus to try to cover up and everything else. And friend of Jesus, there ain't no sense of you quit hiding. He looked up and saw him. Amen. Just like the Lord sees us. Yep. Saw him. The Lord sees everything. That's why he says when he sees you. See, he, the Lord knows the Lord sees. The Lord sees those that are broken hearted. Amen. The Lord sees those, you know, those, those, he sees the proud. He sees, you know, you know what the Lord sees? People struggling. He sees people struggling against sin. Amen. Don't tell me this right here, you know what? That sin don't cause you to struggle. As there's some people captivated and caught up in it, my brother, you know what? They want deliverance. But they don't know how to get out of it. Amen. You know, they think, well, you know, maybe drinking will set, you know, it, it'll, it'll it lay it. No, it won't. Maybe drug it. No. And, you know, people get caught up in these things. And you know what happens? They be getting snared by the devil. Amen. That's why he said, that's why to everybody, you know what? It's not instant. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. No. He says, come unto me all oh, you the labor and heavy laden. I'll give you up. Yeah. Rest. You know why? Because the folks out there struggling and striving with this thing called sin. Amen. Amen. He saw him. See, he saw the sin. He sees the struggle. He sees the hurt and the pain. He's seen everything the woman at the well went. Amen. Before he met her. He knew everything about her. Amen. He knew where the struggle was at. Go call your husband. <laughs> Amen. When the rich young ruler came up, he already knew about him. He said, go sell all you have. He already know where the struggle is. He know what the hindrance is. Amen. He sees it. Amen. He's very acquainted. With those he come to save. Amen. He saw him. Second of all, now he saw him. Just like he sees you. Amen. There's no hiding from the Lord. Amen. If anybody you can be honest with, it's the Lord. Amen. He ain't going to tell nobody. <laughs> you ain't going to worry about it going no further. Amen. It's almost like husbands. Amen. Y'all wives can tell your husbands all your secrets. Not worry about it. Because we ain't listening anyway. <laughs> Just tell us everything. And when we say, uh-huh, it's gone forever. It's in the lockbox of, what did you say? <laughs> look at this. Not only did he saw, see, look at, look at, look at uh, back over that text. Look at verse, uh, uh, verse uh, 5. I'm telling you, the Lord initiated to look at verse 5. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up. And saw him, watch this now, not only did he saw him, he said unto him. Do you see that? He's initiating this. He saw him. He's just a face in the crowd. But Jesus saw him, and then now he said to him, watch what he said. He said to him, uh, Zacchaeus, he called the man by name. Zacchaeus, make haste, come down, for today I must abide at thy house. Now, some people couldn't take this. Man, some people, you know, for, you got to call before you come. I always wonder about what y'all doing. Now, I know what my parents was doing when I was coming. <laughs> I know what folks, y'all just can't be bringing no friends over here. I know what they was doing. Illegal stuff. They had to put stuff, you know, put their special plants away. <laughs> 
and you know, special items had to be put away and everything else. Look at Jonathan looking at me. <laughs> That's when I was coming up. That's how it was. But it's all, he, he saw him. He said, I'm coming to your house. See, let me tell you something. He, he, uh, he was speaking directly to him, amen. Let me tell you something. Uh, a lost person, you know what? God sees you, and when he speaks to you, he's speaking directly to you through the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen. He's speaking. See, he's speaking to you through the gospel, and he's calling you. He spoke to him. He called him by name. Amen. See, that's what the gospel does. It calls you. That's why Jesus Christ said, Come unto me, all labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Watch this. Look at your Bible and look at these verses. Go to uh, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Too many times I think people, you know, they get it mixed up. And when we're telling them what the Bible says, you know, they're thinking, they're thinking oh, y'all just judging me. And y'all just coming up with special verses. Uh, no, let me tell you something. In reality, friend, oftentimes, you know what? It's the gospel of Jesus Christ and it's calling you. And it's God trying to get your attention. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. This Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Look at verse 14. Look at where Paul how he explains this thing. He says, where to, uh, now he's talking to Christians now, but watch this. He said, where to, he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So that's what, that's what it is. It's God calling you. Amen? He's calling you with what? The gospel. See, so many people, you know, oh, the, yeah, that gospel, it's condemning. It's not condemning, friend. It's calling you. It's telling you about some condemnation if you reject. But it's actually calling you to a place of reconciliation. Amen. Amen. That's what it's doing. It's calling you. It's calling you out of darkness. Go to Acts chapter 26 and look at where Brother Paul puts this thing. Acts chapter 26. See, God, Jesus, he initiated this thing. He saw him, and he's doing the speaking to this man. Zacchaeus, up to this point, y'all realize this, right? He ain't said one word. Acts chapter 26. Look at what Brother Paul says. He's giving his testimony. Look at verse 18. He says, this is why God sent me. He said, verse 18, to open their eyes, to turn them from what? Darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. That's what the gospel, people, let me tell you something, folks don't even realize how wrapped up in darkness they are. I sure, that I sure didn't until the gospel started calling me out of the darkness. Amen. I was wrapped up in all kinds, the, the darkness of my own understanding. My understanding was clouded and dark, wasn't yours? God had to call me with this marvelous light through the gospel to get me out of that stuff. Uh, because my, 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 it was clouded through my lack of understanding. It was clouded and darkened through other people. You know why the Bible says the blind lead the blind where you end up. And I had blind people lead me. Amen. Amen. And so the gospel started calling me out. And it started not only did it call me out of darkness, it started calling my sins out. Amen. This is where a lot of people get upset. They don't want nobody calling their sins out. But friend, let me tell you something. You got to be a sinner if he's going to forgive you. Amen. Amen. God's gospel calls, look at verse 18 19, to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light, from the power uh, of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins uh, and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in, in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them at Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles, here it is, that they should repent, turn to God, and do works before repentance. Amen. See, it calls you out. He says, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house today. Amen. That's why I told you the greatest event that ever took place in our lives is when Jesus passed by that day. Amen. And called us out and said, you know what, today, today the gospel has got you under the, under the gun. Amen. Today it's speaking directly to you. Amen. Yes, sir. Watch this. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Look how this gospel calls. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Look at verse 5. And Paul lays these things out and reminds those Christians that God called them. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1. And look at verse 9. 1 Corinthians 1, 9. Look at verse 9. It says, God is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, 
uh, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Uh, look at verse, uh, where does it say? Look at verse 24. It says, But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and wisdom. Uh, look at verse 26. He says, For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after flesh, not many mighty, uh, no, uh, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and uh, God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are uh, despised, has God chosen. Uh, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught the things that, uh, that are, that no flesh should uh, uh, glory in his presence, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus made unto us wisdom, righteousness, and sanctification, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Amen. So when God called me, you know what? I, I can't glory in it. Y'all understand it. I can't, I can't, I can't pat myself on the back and everything, because you know what? I was heading the wrong direction. Amen. The Lord had to call me, turn me around. See, he saw him. And I want you to understand this right here. Not only did he see him, he said, he spoke to him. Amen. And when the gospel is being preached and you're under the gun of conviction, that is God speaking to you. Amen. Now come back to our text. Here's the last thing. Or is it? That's what preachers say to give you hope of getting. And again, y'all know there's a fine line between a hostage situation and a long sermon. <clears throat> but look at this thing. Look at this, verse 5. He said this right here. He says, And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him. Now watch this now. He saw him and said unto him, Make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. He wanted him. He said, I'm coming to your house. Now when somebody comes to you and says, I'm coming to your house, what does that signify? It depends on who's saying it. Now, if some guy, you are walking out, you walking out of downtown and it's, uh, at night and it's dark, and some guy in this shady hood and you can't see his face, he says, I'm coming to your house. That ain't <laughs> That's a bad scenario, right? But when somebody says, hey, man, I'm coming to your house, what does that signify? Fellowship. Fellowship. I'm coming to your house. We fixing to break bread. We fixing to eat. I said he wanted him, man. You know what God? You know people. You know what God wants? Fellowship. That's what he wants. He wants fellowship with his creation. He come to seek and to save that which is what you lost. I'm trying to read. I'm try, we're trying to get this thing back together. He wanted him. Tell me this right here. Who wants sinners but God? Amen. Who wants them? Who wants them but God? God's the only, you know, God's the only one that wants sinners. He not, and he shows it by his son. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his... For what? So sinners can make an escape, amen. So they can have a way, amen. amen. Every place else, my brother, let me tell you something. When they, listen, when they hear about sin and sin shows up in our character, and when you apply stuff, if you told them all the bad, they don't listen. No, do not apply. No, you don't. You 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 can't apply with that character. You got too much bad stuff on your on your on your record. And only God said, I see all the bad stuff. That those are the people that qualify. I want them. Amen. I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Amen. Amen. That's who God's looking for. He's looking for the sinner. The only one. Everybody else don't need not apply. Why? He wants the sinners. He wants to rescue the sinners. Amen. He's a everybody else is trying to make a dime. Make a but y'all know these some of these internet influencers and people comment on this stuff and say, you know, that's terrible. You know what they do? They go out and they give somebody a sandwich. And they video it the whole time. And people comment and say, Why don't you just give them the sandwich? Why you gotta video it? Yeah. See, some people are virtue signaling, aren't they? I'm virtuous. I give people food. Now, some people know, but when you find somebody that's been doing it for ten years and nobody knew about them, that person's not doing it for notoriety. That person's doing it because genuine care. Amen. But some people are doing stuff like this. They all they 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 film it every day. Let me tell you, God genuinely wants to. Uh, deal with a sinner because he's the only one that sent his son to die in their place. Amen. He wants to rescue him. Go to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and look at what your Bible says. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Not Peter. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Look at verse 26. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 26. He says this right here. He says, uh, 
uh, and that, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the who? Devil who are taken, uh, uh, who are taken captive uh, by him at his will. He wants to rescue these sinners. Remember when Jesus Christ sees a crowd, right? The, the disciples saw the crowd and they're like, man, send these people home. This is a desert place, man. It ain't even good for hanging out and everything. And Jesus is like, make them sit down. Why? He said, I have compassion on them. Amen? See, he sees them differently, does he? He said, I see them as sheep having what? No shepherd. And so he makes them sit down, and you know what he does? He feeds them all. Amen? See, well, I told you, when you have fellowship, you know, there's usually food involved. Amen? Was there food involved yesterday? Imagine there wasn't no food. Imagine we kept them here the same amount of time with no food. I say raffle time, half of them say, I got to go, man. But we had, that Bible says, filling, uh, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Amen. Amen. <coughs> it's fellowship. He said, I'm coming to your house to fellowship with you. I don't care what the crowd is saying. I know you're a publican. I know, I know they don't like you. I know they think you're a traitor and everything. That's why he said what he said. He said, today is salvation come to this man's house. Because he, you, you all not know what, who, what a real uh, uh, son of Abraham looks like? This fellow right here. Because I know they didn't think he was. But Jesus said, this is what they really look like. A sinner that has fellowship with the son of God. He wants to rescue you. He wants to redeem you. Go to Ephesians chapter 1. Look what Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 says. He wants to rescue you. He wants to redeem you. You ever met somebody that said, I don't need no rescuing, and it's obvious that they need rescuing. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. Look what it says. To whom we have redemption. Where? Through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. He wants to redeem you. Amen? You want to know what redeem means? Buy you back. Bring you back. Buy you back. Redeem. Amen? How we, re we redeem through what? His blood right there. Amen? That's what he wants. He's coming to your house. I want redemption. I want to rescue him. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing all these things. I don't want anything from you. As far as you can't give me anything, I'm bringing everything you need. Amen. You ever had somebody come up to your house and uh, they said, what you want me to bring? And I, somebody said, and they say, an appetite. I'm like, okay, I'm on the way. Amen. Amen. That's all the Lord wants you to do. That's all he needs you to have is an appetite. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen. He wants you to be reconciled to him. Amen. You see, because he was a publican, y'all remember, y'all know what that means? He was an outcast of society. Now, he was okay among his friends that were like minded vocation, but y'all realize he's an outcast according to the Pharisees. Because y'all remember when the two men went to the temple to pray? Which was, one was a what? A publican. One was a Pharisee, one was a publican. And the Pharisee was praying, I don't do this, I don't do that, and even I, I'm better than this publican. And the publican would not so much lift his eyes toward heaven, but smote his breast and said, Lord, be what? Merciful to me, or what? Sinner. And Jesus said, that man went to his house justified rather than the other. Amen. Why? See, he's seeking reconciliation. Amen. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 before I close. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Look what your Bible says. Verse 18. And all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them. I told you, he sees it all. And hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That's the gospel. Now, then we are ambassadors. We that are saved, you know, we are, we are ambassadors for this, this reconciliation. He says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as that God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ. Stand, what is it? Be reconciled to God. Amen. For he, that's Christ, uh, God, that made him, that's Christ, to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the what? Righteousness of God in him. Amen. 
That's why at the end of this meal and fellowship, Jesus looked at him and said, Today, salvation has come to this house. And he is our... What does Zacchaeus say? He said, man, if I've stolen anything from any man, I pay him back fourfold. That's the sound of somebody that's reconciled. Amen? Now, I've got a last question. I want to ask you something. He said he saw him. He said to him and he wanted him. Amen? And Zacchaeus was wanting what Jesus was offering. Amen? My last question is, has he found you? Has he found you? He saw him. He spoke to him. Amen. Right? And there's a lot of people right there. You ever realize there's a lot of people right there? Because you talk to them. You say, yeah, preacher, I know, you talk, I know what you're talking about. That's true. That's true. And I'm going to do that one day. I intend to do that. And you're like, when? Why? What's, what's holding up? Well, i got things going on in this situation, circumstances. It's complicated, man. It's a lot of things going on in my life. Friend, if you was to die in that situation, you know what? All that stuff, you know what? It's going to be unimportant. Because Jesus Christ said, if you die in your sin, where do I go? You cannot come. Amen. So when he sees you, and when he's speaking to you, amen, you know what? That's the time for him to find you. Amen. You know what the problem is? Some people still hiding. And here's the skinny on it. You know what? You're not really hiding from God at all. Only person you're hiding from is yourself. You're hiding from the greatest thing that will ever take place in your life. You're hiding from the greatest thing that will affect your life in this life. And you're hiding from the greatest thing that will affect your eternity. And you're hiding from it. Amen. Has he found you? It's not enough for him to see you, call you out. Amen. Well, you know what? You got to find you. You got to come out of your hiding places of, of intellectual criticism. A white man wrote that Bible. This got mistakes. You know what? That's just excuses. Amen. Oh, I ain't ready yet. I got to do some things. I'm too young. No, no friend, no. Let me tell you something. Uh, uh, the, the Bible gives the best illustration of, of when it's time to put your faith in Jesus Christ. And the illustration is little children. <laughs> Has he found you? Not your neighbor. This message ain't to your neighbor. This message ain't true. So I was thinking, but no, it's not. If you're lost, this message is directly to you. Amen. You to Zacchaeus that he's looking for, amen? Is he going to find you? Or is he going to pass by you one more time? Amen? Let's all stand for a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed.